Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. Today I'll be talking about potassium cycle. Okay, so let's see what potassium cycle is all about. It consists of uh, four things. Number one is input to the soil. Number two is losses from the soil. Components in the soil as well as chemical processes that occur between K components in the soil. So first, let us start with inputs to the soil. So there are three examples of potassium inputs to the soil. It is of any materials that um, add potassium into the soils. Okay, so we have a uh, plant residues, mineral fertilizers like muriate of potash (MOP), and then we also have animal manure or biosolids. It is any kind of uh, organic-based materials that we put in the soil, whether it be it soil amendment, such as compost, and uh, treated biosolids, okay? So let us see the next one is losses from the soil. Potassium can be lost from the soil in three uh, pathways. Number one is runoff and erosion. Okay, so this is due to the, uh, sorry, it depends on the intensity of rainfall. It depends on the, the seriousness of soil erosion occurrence. Okay, where potassium is easily brought or washed off uh, by uh, soil particles that are, oh, sorry, that are washed off by uh, surface water. All right. The next one is crop harvest. So once we harvest the crops, uh, potassium that was assim assimilated earlier into the plants will be uh, taken out from the soil system. And the third one is leaching. Okay, again, similar to runoff and erosion, leaching also uh, is largely influenced on the intensity of rainfall, where the higher the intensity of rainfall, the more um percolating water okay coming into the soil system so uh, potassium can be leached okay when it dissolves in the percolating water and besides that leaching also depends on the soil texture where clay soil will have less potassium leaching compared to sandy soil okay and this um some other important points that influence leaching are like um, the amount of organic matter in the soils, the soil ion exchange capacity, and also base saturation, and also the type and uh, amount of clay present in the soil. All right, so next we're gonna see what are the components in the soil. So in potassium cycle, we have several uh, K forms. Okay, so the first one is mineral K. Mineral K is insoluble potassium, okay, that is not available to plants. And examples of mineral K are like mica and also feldspar. Okay, examples of mica are like muscovite and biotite. Examples for feldspar is uh, orthoclase. So this mineral K, they must undergo a process that is called weathering for it to be available for plant uptake. Okay, there are two types of uh, weathering processes in the soil. We have physical weathering and chemical weathering. So in short, uh, weathering is a process of alteration of rocks and minerals, okay, so that um, uh, later on, nutrients will be available for plant uptake. But weathering, it is a very slow process and it depends on uh, the mineral properties itself and also the environment. In tropical soils, uh, total K content, the whole uh, components uh, of K in the soil, is generally low because of greater weathering uh, by high rainfall and temperatures. So due to this, our soils contains more um, contains more clay type that unable to hold uh, a lot of K around them. So that's why uh, we have less of uh, total K. K. 
okay so this mineral k they will undergo weathering process um, to become the second type of component which is called fixed k okay another name of fixed k is non-exchangeable k okay why it is called non-exchangeable k because these k are not yet to be available for plants okay it is called non-exchangeable k or fixed k because the dissolved k from the weathering are trapped within the layers of two to one clays examples of two to one clays are like elite and vermiculite all right if the mineral k whether to become kaolinite kaolinite won't be able to fix uh, k so there will be no fixed K or non-exchangeable K in soils of high kaolinite content, right? Fixed K and non-exchangeable K are only applicable when the soils contain uh, elite and vermiculite because they are two to one uh, clay minerals and they are able to trap K within the layers, okay? Trapped or sandwiched between the layers of the clays. And this non-exchangeable K will only be available okay upon a process that we call k release okay and the process is slow similar to weathering process the, the process is slow so what happened is when a k release happen the trapped uh the trapped potassium will be released from the layers and this potassium, they will be attached or they will be adsorbed onto the surface of clay. Alright? So once they are found on the surface of the clay, they are called as exchangeable K. So this exchangeable K, they are adsorbed on the negatively charged active sites in clay, in clay or in humus. So these are called exchangeable K. And um, this exchangeable K, it can be uh, interchanged with other cations like ammonium, calcium, and potassium. Right? So, if our soil contains a high CEC uh, due to uh, the presence of 2 to 1 clay minerals and also humus, so our soil will have high content of exchangeable K. And if uh, this exchangeable K presents in large amount, it can be uh, undergo the reverse uh, process, which is called fixation. Okay, exchangeable K can be fixed again into the two to one clays and become fixed K. It depends on many factors. All right. Okay, so how exchangeable K will be uh, will be available to plant uptake. So once it is available for plant uptake, it is called a soil solution K. Okay, so how it enters soil solution is by a process that we call it desorption. And desorption is a very rapid process. Okay, so once K dissolved from the, um, from the exchange, exchange sites of humus or clay, another type of cation of the same charge must be adsorbed. Okay, in order to, in order to uh, replace uh, the vacant sites of uh, K, okay, which was uh, resided by K earlier. So once K dissolved, uh, K will enter soil solution, all right, and later on, the soil solution will be uh, absorbed by plant uptake and the movement uh, K in soil solution towards plant roots is by diffusion mechanisms that is from high concentration of potassium ions to the low uh, concentration area of uh, potassium ions mm, all right okay so um the soil solution k uh, uh like i said earlier the soil solution k can be leached all right okay so once we apply um fertilizer once we apply fertilizer into the soils or when we apply plant residues or animal manure so when decomposition and mineralization happens when k are uh, released into the soil system so they will they will uh, settle in soil solution okay. all right 
So once they are in the soil solution, so they can be uptake by the plants, they can be lost by leaching, or they can be uh, fixed into to become uh, non exchangeable clay, or they can be uh, adsorbed onto the clay minerals to become exchangeable clay. Okay, so this is the uh, description of potassium cycle where uh, it includes inputs of K into the soil, losses of K from the soil, components that is uh, K forms in the soil as well as chemical processes uh, between the K components or K forms. For example, we have weathering, K release, K fixation, desorption and absorption as well as spun uptake. Okay, that is all for this time. I hope you enjoy learning chapter potassium. Thank you.